those of you who are in the room, to those of you who are joining us online, we want to say welcome. Thank you for being here. This is the day that the Lord has made, Amen. and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Amen. 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 If you will, stand with us this morning, whether you're in your homes or whether you are in the sanctuary. It's so good to see you. Let's go ahead and begin our worship this morning in prayer and then with song. God, thank you so much for this day that you've given us. Lord, thank you that you are who you say you are from the beginning to the end. God, we thank you that you do not change like a fickle wind, but God, you are constant and you are there. We thank you for that. We thank you for who you are and we praise praise you and we praise you in this service this morning as we lift our hands and as we sing in Christ's name amen amen And Lord, we love you this morning and we worship you. We know that you are King of Kings.
are faithful, you are true, you are the rider on the white horse, and you are coming again soon. Oh, yes, Lord. We look forward to your reign here on earth, for this world is in dire need, and you are the answer. You alone are the answer. Thank you. You are the thing we gotta take. You wear the crown of life. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. You are Jesus, the risen Lord. You are Jesus, the risen Lord.
God, your presence is powerful. The words that we sing today, God, glorify your name. They declare who you are. You are the victor over all the craziness, God, that we are seeing in our personal lives, in our world. You win. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated if you can. <laughs> God is good. And all the time, God is good. I want to just say welcome this morning. My name is Christy Britt. If you are new here, if you are new on our stream, I just want to say hello. Um, I am one of the youth leaders here at Bethel Christian Center, and we are so happy to have you, whether it be in the service or online. Today is a very special day. It's one of my favorite Sundays of the entire year, and it is Graduation Sunday. We're going to get to that in just a little bit, but I just want you to get ready <laughs> to celebrate our graduate that we have, and then also all of the accomplishments that our kids at this church um, have done and are doing daily. I first want to mention to you that we do have offering plates in the foyer that form of worship, of giving your tithe or of giving your offering um, is a little bit different, right? Since we can't pass the plate personally, but I do want to let you know that you can give um, to the Lord in the, in the foyer, in the offering plate there. You can also always go to BethelDurham.com backsplash, backsplash. Can y'all tell I would like a new backsplash in my kitchen? <laughs> backslash give. So that is, again, BethelDurham.com backslash give. We also have a few more resources for you online. And those are just a few different things that you can actually take your phone out and try to go to now. Those are BethelDurham.com backslash info. If you are ever looking at what we are doing here at church, if you're ever looking, do we have you know, are we going back today or whatever it may be? What, what kind of events are we having at church, whatnot? That is all there at BethelDurham.com backslash info. There are a couple other places that you can use on our website, including BethelDurham.com backslash prayer. If you have any prayer requests, those are looked at on a daily basis, and we would love to pray for you or for whatever that need is that you have in your life. We also have a contact page on our website if you would like to contact the church for anything, um, ask a question, whatever it may be, you can always use that page as well. And then of course, one that is most important for us on Sunday mornings is BethelDurham.com backslash outline. So if you um, do have your phones, if you will, go ahead and get that ready, get that pulled up so that when pastor comes up here, you are ready to go with the outline right there in front of you. With that being said, if you will, please stand as we welcome the class of 2020. Can be seated and Chandler we're gonna have you come sit right up here bud front and center we have one high school graduate this year and we are so excited for this young man it probably looks weird to see him by himself normally he's got two other grown young men with him but we are excited for you Chandler Holder um, Chandler Holder is graduating from Leesville Road High School this year 2020 there are a few things about Chandler that I just want to mention to you really quick um, one is that he enjoys working 
and helping others. If you have ever run into Chandler, if you've ever, ever run into those two boys that are with him, they are ready to help you in what you need to do. Whatever it is that you need, Chandler's there to help. He is currently working at, his, at the family business called Holder and Sons Equipment, and he plans to start Wake Technical Community College in the late summer to pursue a career of being a lineman. At this time, we've got a little video to show you so you can all get ready to ooh and ah over baby Chandler. Congratulations, Chandler. So this is a little different kind of graduation service. Typically, I would meet you down front and shake your hand, give you a big hug. We still have a Bible that we'd like to give you. Um, that Bible, I will say, is just like the one I'm reading from today. It's by far the favorite Bible that I've come across. So we're so proud of you, Chandler. Um, congratulations. I will say to everyone that a few years back, one of the most exciting moments of my time here as a youth pastor is the Sunday morning at the end of the service when I was walking across. I can't remember what was going on or who I was heading to talk to, but Chandler, who I knew but didn't really have a relationship with, came up to me, and he said he needed to talk. He said he wanted to accept Jesus into his life. This is, yeah, Amen. This is a young man at that point who I had seen around the church years prior. He had come through the children's ministry here and there, and I know he was in middle school at that point. And again, I would see him at church with Derek Holder. He would come um, always right there with Derek. And for him to approach me that morning without having a relationship, without anything else going on, meant so much. Of course, accepting Christ is the most important thing that any of us could ever do. And to see a young person come to that of their own accord without any kind of extra, you know, of course there was one, those that poured into him along the way, but that just meant so much to me. And I'm so thankful for you, Chandler. I'm very thankful to how far you've come, thankful to the example that you've been in the youth group. Obviously not one for the spotlight, one that is quiet and one that wants to shy away at times. Um, I'm so thankful for the relationship that you have with Cody and Tanner. I'm so thankful that your family is so close. Because I think, as with anything we could see in this world, that's one of the things that we're losing. 
is the closeness of the family. And that's the way that God intended it to be. So I'm so thankful for that. And I have a few things I'd like to read because before we go through the rest of the service, we are going to honor all of our K-12 through students. We were hoping to do a promotion Sunday throughout this year and with the fact that we haven't been able to have the in-person children's ministries, this has become all the more important. But the point is, as a young person, children are the model of faith. They're the ones that we are to look to. Specifically, Mark chapter 9, verses 35 through 37, speaks of Jesus sitting down amongst the disciples. They had just come from doing great things, and the the disciples were arguing about which among themselves were the greatest. And he sits them down, and he says, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. He then takes a little child and sets him in the midst of the disciples and says, After he had taken the child into his arms, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. And most of us are familiar with the passage in Luke that says, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, by no means enters it. And so we know that the children are the example of faith. That's why there's such a priority. So many people that come to Christ do so at a young age. And that's what makes, Chandler, your story so exciting is that we all know that there's that time. It happens for each of us in our lives where we go through this phase of the innocence and the beauty of childhood. And all of a sudden the world opens up and we have choices to make. All of a sudden there's a sense of responsibility that kind of just drops into our lap and we're still a child and yet everything else is happening in life and we have this sense of adulthood going on. There's that tension. But in the midst of that, Chandler, you said, no, I need to accept Jesus Christ. And that's the most important thing, y'all, for any of us. And that's why we do this. That's why we do children's ministry from the get-go. That's the point, is to accept Christ. Because at the end of the day, it's not about anything that you can do. And we'll read accomplishments today and, and all these great things. But ultimately, eternity rests on a decision that we're going to trust our life to the perfect life that was lived. And so it's so exciting, Chandler, to be able to have been a part of the baptismal service, to have been a part of your life here as you've gone forward. And we know that as you go forward, we ask you to stay on that course. There will be good days, there will be bad days, there will be times you have to get it right. But most importantly is that you do and that you're looking towards that one source. And so I'm so thankful for you, Chandler. I ask that the family that has been so important to him through all these years would come and sit on either side of him. Typically, we would pray for the young people. We ask them to to make that choice as we go forward, but here in this moment, we want to pray and to bless them. Um, I won't lay hands like we typically would today, but uh, Heather and Stephen, if you would come and and sit on either side of Chandler and serve as that proxy for us as the church, because this is our job as the church to support these individuals, right? And Chandler may still be around. He may still be someone that we see, but as you go forward, this is a huge milestone for you, And for those that look up to you, Chandler, as an example, would you pray with me as we lift up this young man? Lord God, thank you for Chandler Holder. God, I thank you, Lord, for the life that he has, Lord, the plans that you have laid before him. God, I thank you, Lord, that you called him, Lord, years ago, Lord, and that he surrendered to that call. God, I thank you, Lord, that he was baptized in water, God, confessing, Lord, you as his Lord and Savior. God, I thank you, Lord, for how you've worked in his life, Lord, how he's grown in the word, God, how he's grown physically. Lord, and I pray, Lord, as he goes forward, that he would entrust, God, every decision to you. God, that you would keep him, Lord God, when he's weak, Lord, and that he would glory in you, Lord, when he's strong. God, I thank you for his parents, for his grandparents, God, for all those that have stood beside him all these years. God, we pray, Lord, that, God, in the future, he'd be able to give back, Lord, and that the family you would remain strong. God, we thank you, Lord, for the faith that is found in Christ, for the hope and the assurance, Lord, that comes from trusting in you. Lord, that you make all the difference, Lord, and when we can't, you already did. God, with this morning, we join in faith with Chandler, Lord, and we bless him, Lord God, that you would give him favor, Lord, and ordain his steps as he goes forward. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, Chandler. And make sure you grab that Bible before y'all head back to your seat. We love you. Y'all see why it's my favorite day. (laughs) Well, 
this Sunday, as Michael said, we want to do something a little bit um, a little bit more in depth with our students, and we want to recognize each one of those that are K through 12 by showing their picture on the screen, telling you what grade they have been promoted to, and also to let you know a little bit about them. Um, we asked them two questions, and they could choose which one they wanted, one being, what is your favorite class, and the other being, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? Our first student, and you can wave if you want to, I won't make you stand. <laughs> Our first student is Cody Fisher. Cody Fisher is going to the 12th grade at Person High School next year. Our next student is Chase Ferrer. He is um, also going to go to the 12th grade at Voyager Academy, and his favorite subject is Chinese. <laughs> Isabel is also being promoted to the 12th grade, and she is studying at the City of Medicine Academy. Her academic goal is to become a pediatric nurse practitioner. McKenna is being promoted to the 12th grade <laughs> and she is studying at Eno River Academy and her favorite subject is art. Caroline Lovell is being promoted to the 11th grade, and she is studying at the Durham School of the Arts. Her favorite subject is Spanish, and when she grows up, she wants to pursue a career in nursing. Josh Philpott is being promoted to the 11th grade and studies at Falls Lake Academy. Brianna is being promoted to the 11th grade and is studying at Northern High School. She hopes to become an avian and exotic animal veterinarian. So if you can't tell, my heart's going to start palpitating next year when we've got all these 12th graders and then the next year when we've got all these 11th graders. Anyway, I'll be okay. All right. <laughs> Next, we have Tanner Fisher. Tanner is being promoted to the 11th grade and is studying at Person High School. <laughs> Next, we have Charlize. Charlize is studying at Durham School of the Arts. She is being promoted to the 10th grade, and her favorite subject is dance and art. Haley Doherty is going to the 10th grade at Voyager Academy High School, and her favorite subject is world history. <laughs> Lucas Rumpel is being promoted to the 10th grade at Person Early College. His favorite subject is English, and he wants to study film and video in the future. Shakaya is being promoted to the 10th grade at Riverside High School, home of the Pirates, and her favorite subject is math. <laughs> Ryan Fisher is being promoted to the 8th grade, and he is homeschooled at Alverde Academy. He says that he likes anything to do with computers and wants to be a design engineer. Autumn is being promoted to the sixth grade at Falls Lake Academy. Her favorite subjects, girl after my own heart, is lunch, recess, and social studies. <laughs> Ch 
Chad is being promoted to the seventh grade. Chad says that he wants to be a police officer and his favorite subject is science. Leanne is being promoted to the seventh grade and she studies at Discovery Charter School. Her favorite subject is math. <laughs> Chloe Watson is being promoted to the fourth grade and Chloe says that she wants to be a preacher and her favorite subject is math. <laughs> Shamari is going to the fourth grade at Holt Elementary next year, and his favorite subject is Engu English language arts. <laughs> next, we have Ava. She is currently eight years old. She started third grade curriculum earlier this year in her homeschool studies. She is homeschooled at Walker Rock Academy. Her favorite subjects are science and math, which will come in handy, she says, because she wants to be a doctor or a builder when she gets big. She hasn't fully decided between the two, but she knows for certain she wants to be a dance teacher as well. <laughs> Sadie Watson is promoted to the third grade, and Sadie says that she wants to be a movie star, and her favorite subject is reading. Next we have Emma. Emma is currently six years old, but she will be seven on the 10th, which has already passed, so if you can say happy birthday to Emma. Um, she enjoys math the most. She is homeschooled at the Walker Rock Academy as well with her sister. And they normally graduate in the winter months, so she's moved to the first grade early this year. Emma says she wants to own her own family farm with horses when she gets big. So she will take care of them, be a horse rider, as well as teach and train younger kids who love horses like her. There are a few other students that we were not able to get pictures from, but we do want to just mention their names to you very quickly. Um, we have Alana and Steven and Armand and Kelsey, Josiah, Jeremiah, Jacardi, and if there are any others, we just want to say congratulations. So those were our K through 12 promotions. Of course, you know, we have many wonderful preschool students here as well. We also have many wonderful college students who we are very, very, very proud of all of their accomplishments. We are so excited to see what God is gonna do in your life in this next coming school year of 2020 and 2021. Wow, what a morning. What a morning. This is just absolutely wonderful to see all these young people and these children. By the way, uh, when we have regular activities, uh, they, most of these are here on Wednesday night. If you want to see a wonderful picture of many, many of these young people and children when we get back into our normal schedule, if you'll come on Sunday night, you'll see them eating pizza. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you. Wednesday night. If you'll come on Wednesday night, you'll see them eating pizza, laughing, talking, enjoying themselves, fellowshipping together. Sister Judy, if you'll come here and get ready to play me a song. I was not going to sing, but I am going to sing. Can you, can you play Acres of Diamonds? If you can, I'll get someone else. <laughs> but I thank God for, it's good to have the parents here and families here. And it's so wonderful to have 
teachers that dedicate their time, dedicate themselves to, uh, to training these young people. I said they'll be eating pizza and all these kind of things. Let me tell you what the main course that they'll be partaking of is the Word of God. They're taught the Word of God. This song was written many years ago. I don't know whether you realize when you become a Christian all the things that are available to you and how great it is. But the songwriter said it this way. Acres of diamonds Mountains of gold Rivers of silver Beauties untold All these together Couldn't buy you or me Peace when we're sleeping or a heart that's at ease a heart that's contented a satisfied mind these are the traits Money can't buy if you have Jesus. <laughs> there's more wealth in your soul than acres of diamonds. Mountains of gold love that song give me a give me a, just a praise unto the Lord you can't play it you can't play it you can't play it <laughs> last Sunday we talked about uh, uh, or asked a question how many of uh, the disciples of Jesus were fishermen and I said, the person that calls me after the service or gets in touch with me, uh, whatever, and uh, answers that will get this wonderful Bible. I'm jealous. I have the Spirit-filled Bible, but this is just so improved. And uh, I love it's Jack Hayford's uh, commentaries, but it's the New King James Version and a lot of study material in here. I would encourage you to have one of these Bibles. But... We got a call or somehow, and one of our favorite persons in the world is Jewel Yarborough, and she had the answer. It was seven disciples, really and truly, were the uh, uh, fishermen of Jesus. Would you give Jewel a hand? Thank you for coming. It is good to see you in the house of the Lord today as... Uh, Christy said the outline is online or you can pick it up or maybe picked it up as you came in. It's in the foyer. But I'd like for everyone to have an outline if you possibly could because, uh, you know, you remember a whole lot more of uh, what you read than what you hear. Father, we love you today. I would not try to stand behind this pulpit and preach unless I know you were with us. Lord, wrap us in your love today. Touch hearts. Lord, we need you. We're desperate without you. I pray that you'd give us ears to hear, hearts to understand. And may your word go forth in a precious and powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The good shepherd. No, we're not going to talk about the good shepherd. The uh, prodigal son. No, we're not going to talk about the prodigal son. 
We're going to talk about the Good Samaritan. And that is uh, an oxymoron almost because Good Samaritan, when you understand how Samaritans were looked upon, especially in the New Testament, but always all through the Old Testament and New Testament. But the Good Samaritan, let me read some scripture here. Follow me, if you will, on the uh, video, and here we go. And behold, a certain lawyer, now that's an expert in the law of Moses, and uh, a religion scholar it says here, lawyer, that's who it was, stood up and tested him, tested Christ, saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And your neighbor, he said, this is that uh, well-learned uh, scholar, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. But he wanted, now listen to this, but he wanted to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man <clears throat> went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Wow. Now by chance, a certain priest came down the, that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, what? He had compassion. So he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, which is about uh, two uh, days' uh, earnings, and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So that, so which of these three, Jesus said, do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Why did Jesus pick a Samaritan? Why, would, why did this story even include Samaritan? Very good question, very important. Notice the introduction on your outline. We certainly live in days when the Spirit of God, uh, I'm sorry, when, this, when the Spirit of the Good Samaritan is needed and the place it should be displayed, say amen to this one, is in the lives of Christians. By using a simple story, Jesus shows that enemies can prove to be neighbors, that compassion has no boundaries, and that judging people on the basis of their religion or ethnicity will leave us dying in a ditch. This man would have died if that Samaritan had not stopped and tended to him. Now, I mentioned last week I'll be talking somewhat about racism. I have one paragraph here, and then I'm going to get into this great story. Racism is not a skin problem. And this is a, a statement by Mike Huckabee. Many of you know of Mike or know him. He was the uh, governor of Arkansas, and he says racism is not a skin problem. It's a sin problem. This is not a political divide. It's a spiritual divide. If you have cops that don't understand that their authority is limited to the law and you have a guy that puts his knee on a guy's neck and kills him, that's a sin problem. 
got a little quiet. If you have people who take to the streets and they think they have a right to steal other people's property indiscriminately, whether the property is owned by blacks or whites, that's a sin problem. Amen? We've got to get to the heart of the problem, and that is certainly a sin problem in the hearts and lives of people. Now, I want you to think about this this story that Jesus told this lawyer. First of all, the good shepherd. Now, he was a traveler, and he, tro he, tra he, he, he traveled uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho. That's about 17 maybe or 20 miles. It's rocky. It's a dangerous uh, road. It was a dangerous road to travel. There were thieves that dwelt in caves and came out at times and they terrorized these travelers. And he fell among these thieves, these robbers, and they attacked him and left him, they robbed him and left him as dead. Notice, first of all, the religious passerby. Two, two other men, two men came. First of all, <laughs> There was the priest who served in the temple. He saw him and passed on the other side. That's the reason, my, my friend, we don't necessarily need religion. We need salvation. We don't need necessarily religion. We need a relationship with Jesus Christ. After the priest passed by, there was a Levite. The Levite, my friend, took care of the temple. He saw him and passed by on the other side they did not minister to him and then came the Samaritan the Jews and the Samaritans wanted nothing to do with each other yet when he saw the injured Jewish man the Bible says in verse 33 that I read he had compassion on him he bandaged up his wounds pouring oil and wine on them and he put him on his own beast and brought him to an end and took care of him. One of the things that we have to understand is the enmity between the Samaritans and the Jews. And to give us a little understanding of this, imagine the hatred between the Serbs and the Muslims in modern Bosnia. The enmity between the Catholics and the Protestants years ago and still is in Northern Ireland. Or the feuding between street gangs in Los Angeles or New York. And you have some idea of the feeling and its causes between Jews and Samaritans in the time of Jesus. Both of these problems originated from pro politics and religion. They hated each other. It was a deep hatred that these two, pe these two uh, uh, people had, or, or the Jews and the, and the Samaritans. And uh, Jesus is saying that, that he was willing to minister and to help this man. I hope as I go through the characteristics of this Samaritan that each one of us can look and see, does, do I have this kind of spirit? Am I willing to have this kind of compassion? First of all, he opened his eyes. He saw the man. And we have here, before we can meet needs, we must be aware of those needs. You get up in the morning, you go out into the world, you're going to see people with needs. You go to church and you're going to look around and there are people there in that church with needs. It's important for us to understand that God has put us here to reach out to a lot of hurting people. And would you say they're hurting people today? There are people that are confused. And it's time that you and I brought light to them. I want to read, if you will, 1 John chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. It says, Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, John says, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. And again, a new commandment. John says, I write to you which thing is true in him and in you. 
because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The reason that John could say this is because of none other than the light that Jesus Christ brought into the world. Verse 9, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. No matter who you are, be anyone in this church, it could be anyone in Atlanta, it could be anyone on the streets, it could be anyone. No matter who you are, if you say, I hate, it just opens up for darkness to come in. You may not say that literally, but that's exactly what happened. He who says, I want to read it again. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling. Verse 11, but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going. To love is to walk in light. To hate is to walk in darkness. Hate, I believe, is dividing people today, whether it's in the church whether it's in our nation, it can be in Washington, D.C., and there is so much, so much hate and bitterness and unforgiveness, but God says you can't walk in light if you hate your brother. Hate has a blinding effect in this scripture. It says when you hate and light comes in, he does not, we do not know where we are going. Amen? We do not know where we're going. The true light, <clears throat> which the gospel reveals, dispels the darkness of moral ignorance and satanic, listen to this, bondage. And people are in bondage today because they allow hate, sin, immorality, all the things that they allow to come into their heart. And that's where it starts, is in the heart. And it's a satanic power. Love the Lord, Jesus says in Matthew chapter uh, 22, verses 37 through 39. It says, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then the second commandment is just alike. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. When we love people, we respect all human beings regardless of their race, regardless of their language or ethnic heritage. Loving people, that's a good place. Amen. That's a good place. I like it. The good Samaritan opened his eyes and he opened his heart. The difference between the priest and the Levite's gaze and the Samaritan was compassion. I don't know. I don't know where the compassion is gone. I don't know where the feeling for our, 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 our fellow man is. I just pray that as, as we listen to this, we ask God. And if you're listening as we stream to you, I pray that you'll ask God to give you love. It doesn't matter who they are. And God can do that. If this Samaritan can stop and, and pick up a Jew, and take, and, take, and take care of him. You can love your neighbor. And you can love the person that the enemy wants you to hate. Amen? He opened his eyes. He opened his heart. Then he opened his hand. It's one thing to open our eyes and see a need. It's one thing to have compassion. But it's another thing to take that individual, pour oil and pour wine and bring healing. Families need healing. Individuals need healing. Our nation needs healing. And that's our prayer today. He opened his eyes. He opened his heart. He opened his hands. And he opened his purse. Not only did he take and pour oil and wine and, and bandaged him up. He put him on his donkey. And he carried him to the end. And there he stayed with him. Listen to this. He stayed with him all night. 
and he took care of him. What a love. What a love. It's one thing to say I love somebody. It's one thing to say I love those people, but it's something else to reach out and be a blessing to them. He opened his, hand, his eyes, his heart. He opened his hands, and he opened his purse. Before he left the innkeeper, he said, Listen, would you take care of him? And if you need more when I get back, I'll give you more. Are we willing to spend? Are we willing to open up our financial means and give to those that are in need? Give to those that are in need. He opened his schedule. Now, this is important. Listen to me. He opened his schedule. He put his journey on hold for a while in order to do that which was more important. We are too busy. <laughs> We're too busy. We need to slow down. We need to take time. And we need to take time, and you have this morning, and you're in church. We need to take time for those that are in need to, to visit our, our neighbors, to visit those uh, in the rest home, to visit those in the hospital, to say, listen, I care. I care. I hope one of these or all of these touched your life. He opened his eyes. I want to see today. He opened his heart. God, give me compassion and love for those that even the devil wants them to be my enemies. He opened his hands and he gave, he helped him, he, he ministered to him. He opened his purse. He was willing to give financially, and then he took time as he opened his schedule. It's important that we do these things. The response and what we want you to think of, there are people hurting financially, there are people hurting physically, and there are people hurting emotionally and spiritually, spiritually also. I pray, I pray earnestly. God, help us to understand that you have put us here. You say, I want needs met. Then let's do something about it. Let's pray. When we get up in the morning, God, let me, help me to be aware of the needs that I come in contact with and reach out and touch those people. The parable insists that love be manifest in what? Say it. Action. I don't want to just tell you I love you. I want to show you I love you. I want to be willing to reach out and take time to help. I want to bless you. Peter was willing to help someone. Listen to Acts 9. Now it came to pass as Peter went through all parts of the country that he also came down to the saints who dwell in Lydia. There he found a certain man named Ananias. And he who had been bedridden, listen to this, he'd been bedridden for eight years and was paralyzed. A lot of hurting people, and here Peter found one. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus, the Christ, heals you. Arise and make your bed. Now listen to this statement. Then he arose immediately. He And so all who dwelt in Lydda, and, and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Thank God. See, that's what happens when we reach out and touch people's lives. It affects people when it comes to their relationship with the Lord. Love someone. You know, uh, Linus of the peanut cartoon. <laughs> he said, I love mankind. It's people I can't stand. But if we love Jesus Christ and we have a relationship with him, then it's people we love. People that's hard to love. Let me tell you about unity. Over 20 years ago, Durham Ministers in Prayer started prayer on 9th Street. Well, we didn't start on 9th Street. We started at the library downtown. But it wasn't long before we moved to Day Spring Church on 9th Street. And Paul Gordon and myself, we, we felt led to gather ministers, preachers, 
parachurch ministers, all those that were in ministry, although that's gone further now. And so we started Durham Ministers in Prayer, been meeting, as I said, on 9th Street. And let me tell you something. There's a unity there I have never seen any better in my life. Unity. There are Presbyterians. There are Baptists. There are Pentecostals. About 40 of us. There are Charismatics. There are Catholics. Until the virus, we would meet and we would hug and we would laugh and we would cry together. And we reached out to each other. The devil would like to bring barriers between religious leaders in this city. And we meet every Tuesday. Even during the virus, we had a conference prayer on the phone. There's a love there. I pray that God would break down these barriers one of my favorite persons there, his name is Willie Gibson. He's a precious black gentleman. Listen to his prayer just recently. Well, Heavenly Father, our hearts are heavy, broken. And Willie goes on to say, please give us eyes to see and ears to hear where your spirit is working. Help us to see every person the way you see them. Break our hearts for what breaks yours. Let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us not merely say, Father, that we love each other. Give us strength to mourn with those who mourn and weep with those who weep. Let your justice roll like waters. Let your righteousness and your love flow from us like rivers of living water. Purify our hearts, Lord, and fill us with genuine hunger for justice, for mercy, for true peace. Heavenly Father, let justice and mercy start with me. God, hear that prayer. Hear that prayer for this church, for us individually. Hear that prayer for Durham, North Carolina. Hear that prayer for the state of North Carolina. Hear that prayer for our nation. Oh, God. It's time for the church to pray. It's time for the church to pour out its heart. It's time for us to see people that are really and truly hurting. Don't pass by. I'm too busy. I don't have time. My schedule is tight. God can help us as we reach out to people and love them. People that are hurting. People that need somebody to touch their lives. Charles, Charles Stanley, he said, What we see in the Good Samaritan is genuine Christ like attitude. He said, We don't lack opportunities to be the Good Samaritans. But we must first see the needs, feel compassion, and be willing to be inconvenienced in order to give our time and resources for help. As we allow the love of Jesus to flow through our hearts, we will understand more and more what it means to love our neighbors. We sing a song on 9th Street, quite often when we gather together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us 
together with sing it with me there is only one god there is only one king there is only one body that is why I sing, sing it, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us Together with Russ Taft sings a song, powerful song. I hope we'll listen to it. Let it touch our hearts. Russ Taft, as he sings, we will stand.
wish we could hug and shake hands and get together. We will one day. beautiful. Isn't that a wonderful? Isn't that, I just love that. <laughs> Cheryl Smith, thank you so very much for putting that together. And, Pat, and Brother David, and that was uh, meet me at the bridge and reaching out. And uh, several of our folks was in the picture. And meet me at the bridge, reaching out to a lot. You're talking about a good Samaritan. I couldn't have ended no better than that, preaching that sermon. You're my brother. Brother, can I... Uh, Brother Matt, can I get y'all to come back? Now, I'm going to have a prayer. I'm going to pray in just a moment, so don't leave yet. But now, we've still got time, but if you feel like you have to leave, we understand. But I've got to hear that song again. i got to bring those walls down. i got I got to bring all those things down that you were bringing down. You know what song I'm talking about? Okay. But we're going to pray. And if you're here today and you're lost, you need Jesus. I hope you'll accept him. If you're here today and you need God to touch your life in any way, listen, we believe in deliverance in this church. We, we believe in the manifestation of the Spirit of God in this church. We believe in divine healing in this church. It happens. It will happen. God is still active in hearts and lives today. What happened with the early church is still happening today. The great outpouring that came on the day of Pentecost, them speaking in tongues, the moving of the Spirit of God, the gifts of the Spirit operating. And those people, the 120 about, went out from that upper room and they turned their world upside down. Hallelujah. It happens. It will happen if we exercise faith. We've got to exercise faith, and we've got to believe God. Don't get your eyes on what's happening in the world today because that's a spiritual battle. We're making it a natural battle, but it's not a natural battle. It's a spiritual battle, and it's, it's sin that we're fighting against. It's Satan that we're fighting against. So I want us to bow our heads and pray. And then if you can, let's stay and sing this song, and then we'll go home. Father, we love you today. God, I thank you for meeting me at the bridge. I thank you for David Smith and the ministry that you placed upon his heart. I thank you for the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have been beaten and stripped and left by the wayside, hurting, hungry, and yet I've seen so many, so many that have come through that ministry and been healed, been saved, been delivered, been ministered to. What a love. And I pray for Meet Me at the Bridge. I pray, God, for those ministry. I ask you, God, to bless. And now, dear God, as we listen to this song, let it bless our hearts. Let us understand no matter what wall, no matter how the enemy has built all those things in our life, maybe there's unforgiveness. Maybe there's pain from the past that needs to be dealt with. Deal, we pray that we would deal with it today. As this song is sung, we pray that the Holy Spirit would break down every wall, every defense that the enemy has built up. In Christ's name, amen.
against racism. I pray against hate. I pray against confusion. I pray against the attack of Satan on this nation. And I pray, God, that everything, every high place be brought down today. I pray for our cities that are under attack. I pray that some way I join Willie Gibson's prayer. And I pray that some way, somehow, mercy and peace and righteousness would reign in our cities, in our lives, in our churches. God, may every high thing that Satan has built up, may it come down in Jesus' name. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You and a victor's crown. You overcome. You, you overcome. Every high thing must go. Oh, yes, every high thing. Every stronghold shall be broken. You and a victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. Isn't that a great song to leave on? God bless you. Thank you for coming. I usually say turn around, shake hands, and be real friendly. Just be real friendly.